In this video, we are going to demonstrate how to report reimbursements and credit card payments in the new EFS web application. The new web-based system does not utilize schedules as previous iterations of EFS have used. However, the categories in which different data will be entered closely mirror the schedules that were used in the past. In this video, we will be working in the File a Disclosure Report page from the main navigation at the top of the screen after creating our report. For instructions on how to create the report, please view the video entitled Filer Dashboard in EFS. Please note that the Transaction Type drop-down menu located towards the top of the page will only populate with items that are applicable for your committee type. To start, select the sixth category for data entry in the Transaction Type drop-down menu entitled Expenditures slash Payments. Once the transaction type is chosen and the user selects Apply, you will see new drop-down menu options for sorting and columns to view. The choices default to Created Date and Descending for sorting. As for column view, six are required but others can be selected based on personal preference. Once you choose which you prefer to see, select Set Preferences. In this video, we are only going to cover two specific types of expenditures, reimbursements and credit card payments. For a full overview of reporting expenditures in the new EFS web application, please see the previous video entitled Expenditures slash Payments. Select the Add New Transaction button to begin entering a transaction. A new dialog box opens. There are four questions at the top of the Add Edit Transaction dialog box. Let's review what each means. Number one, is transaction itemized? A single expenditure may be disclosed as unitemized if it is $49.99 or less. Select Yes from the drop-down menu for itemized expenditures. For more information about unitemized expenditures, please see the previous video entitled Expenditures slash Payments. Number two, is expenditure subcontracted? Occasionally, a committee will have an expenditure to a vendor and that vendor subcontracts some or all of the work. Subcontractor information is required when the subcontracted amount is greater than $10,000 for statewide candidates and greater than $5,000 for all other offices. Select yes or no from the drop-down menu based on your situation. Number three, is this a partial payment or payment on an outstanding liability? Occasionally, a committee will have an expenditure that is only a partial payment of a total liability owed to an individual or entity. When this is the case, the committee must disclose the total amount owed, the amount of the current payment, and the balance remaining. The unpaid balance remains disclosed as an outstanding liability of the committee until paid or forgiven in full. Select yes or no from the drop-down menu based on your situation. Number four, has this liability been previously reported? Select Yes from the drop-down menu to answer this question if the committee has previously reported an amount as an outstanding liability. The committee will then select which outstanding liability this expenditure is paying down from a list. This question is grayed out if the committee has no current outstanding liabilities. Select No from the drop-down menu if this is not applicable. We will first demonstrate how to report a reimbursement to an individual or entity. In our example, the committee is reimbursing Thomas Lopez for several different campaign purchases. The scenario is a familiar one for many committees. A campaign worker or volunteer purchases a number of things with his or her personal funds for the campaign and then presents the receipts to the committee treasurer for reimbursement. Let's start with that reimbursement transaction. We answer the four questions at the top of the dialog box appropriately using the drop-down menus. Yes, 
no, no, no. Next, enter the date the reimbursement expenditure is made or select it from the calendar provided. Next, enter the name and address of the payee in the fields provided. If this is a payee you have entered into the EFS web application before, the fields will populate upon selection from the drop-down menu. Select reimbursement as the purpose code from the drop-down menu. In the new EFS web application, abbreviations are not used, full words are. Next, select the method of payment from the drop-down menu and input a check number if applicable. You will then enter the total amount of the reimbursement expenditure. Please note that the explanation field can be used to provide any other information. The asterisks indicate what fields are required for saving the transaction. Please be aware that they are not a complete picture of compliance requirements. Select the Save button and a new dialog box opens entitled Add, Edit, Reimbursement Details. At this point, we have only disclosed the expenditure to the individual, Mr. Lopez. But that is not enough because it doesn't disclose where the money ultimately went. All that has been disclosed thus far is a lump sum to an individual. In the new Add, Edit, Reimbursement Details dialog box, the filer will enter in all of the specific purchases for which the individual is being reimbursed. In our example, one of the things Mr. Lopez is being reimbursed for is a purchase at Walmart for office supplies. If the reimbursement detail entry will be itemized, select yes to the question, is transaction itemized? Keep in mind the rules about itemization. Enter the date that the reimbursed person made the payment to the vendor or select it from the calendar provided. The original payee name field is already populated with the reimbursed person's name. Next, enter the name and address of the vendor or details payee that was paid by the individual in the fields provided. In this case, the payee was Walmart. If this is a payee you have entered into the EFS web application before, the fields will populate upon selection from the drop-down menu. Select the purpose code from the drop-down menu. In this case, printer ink was purchased at Walmart, so office seems appropriate. We select that option. If no purpose code accurately describes your expense, please choose other. Enter the amount that was spent at the vendor by the individual. Please note that the explanation field can be used to provide any other information. It is required when other is used as the purpose code. The asterisks indicate what fields are required for saving the transaction. Please be aware that they are not a complete picture of compliance requirements. Select the Save button and a new dialog box opens with the statement, Transaction Saved Successfully. Select OK to close. The Add Edit Reimbursement Details dialog box remains open. You will repeat these steps for all other separate purchases for which the individual has been reimbursed until the amount itemized in purchases matches the total amount reimbursed to the individual. After closing any open dialog boxes for entering transactions and details, a link entitled Reimbursement Details appears on the page in the table in the Action column. Select the Reimbursement Details link from the table to see the amount outstanding that has not yet been itemized. Select Add Reimbursement Details if more itemization is needed. This allows for a mapping of the details of the reimbursement and connects them back to the expenditure to the individual. To complete the process in our example, we will add two more detailed transactions, one for an expenditure to Shutterfly.com and then another disclosing a lump sum of small, unitemized transactions. Select the Add Reimbursement Details button. Again, we enter the date of the purchase, the vendor name and address,
the purpose code of the expenditure, the amount of the purchase, and any other necessary details in the explanation field. Select the Save button, and a new dialog box opens with the statement, Transaction Saved Successfully. Select OK to close. As the last chunk of the reimbursement, Mr. Lopez made several small purchases, which all fall within the threshold for unitemization. While we are entering in this unitemized detail, let's point out the changes in the dialog box. If no is selected from the drop-down menu answering the question, is transaction itemized, the required fields in the dialog box will change. Only the date, amount, and explanation fields remain. Enter the date the unitemized expenditure or expenditures were made by Mr. Lopez or select it from the calendar provided. The original payee name field is already populated with the reimbursed person's name. Next, enter the amount of the unitemized expenditure. This may be a lump sum. In our example, by disclosing this unitemized reimbursement detail item of $215, we are attesting to the fact that the sum is made up of multiple small transactions that are all $49.99 or under. Please note that the explanation field can be used to provide any other information. The asterisks indicate what fields are required for saving the transaction. Please be aware that they are not a complete picture of compliance requirements. Select the Save button and a new dialog box opens with the statement, Transaction Saved Successfully. Select OK to close. Keep in mind that a single expenditure may be disclosed as unitemized if it is $49.99 or less. And even if reported as unitemized, the treasurer must still have all details of the expenditure in committee records. Internal accounting is not the same as public disclosure. Unitemization is an option, but not a requirement. Filers may fully itemize every single expenditure if preferred. After closing any open dialog boxes, there is now $0.00 outstanding in the reimbursement detail transactions. The reimbursement has been fully itemized and the process is complete. For the second part of this video, we will review how to disclose a scenario where the committee has a credit card, uses the card throughout the month to make purchases, and then pays the balance containing all of those purchases when the bill comes. Disclosing a credit card payment of the committee closely mirrors the disclosure of a reimbursement, which has just been outlined. In our example today, our committee has its own credit card, an American Express card. The treasurer uses the credit card to pay for fundraising event expenses. The bill arrives and the treasurer issues a check to the credit card company to pay the balance in full. Select the Add New Transaction button to begin entering a transaction. A new dialog box opens. Again, there are four questions at the top of the Add Edit Transaction box that we reviewed earlier. Number one, is transaction itemized? From the drop-down menu, we select Yes for our example. Number two, is expenditure subcontracted? From the drop-down menu, we select No. Number three, is this a partial payment or payment on an outstanding liability? From the drop-down menu, we select no. And number four, has this liability been previously reported? This drop-down menu is grayed out if the file has no current outstanding liabilities. Next, enter the date the expenditure to the credit card company is made or select it from the calendar provided. Next, Enter the name and address of the payee in the fields provided. In this case, this is the credit card company. If this is a payee you have entered into the EFS web application before, the fields will populate upon selection from the drop-down menu. Select credit card payment as the purpose code from the drop-down menu. Next, select the method of payment from the drop-down menu and input a check number if applicable. 
You will then enter the total amount of the credit card payment. Please note that the explanation field can be used to provide any other information. The asterisks indicate what fields are required for saving the transaction. Please be aware they are not a complete picture of compliance requirements. Select the Save button and a new dialog box opens entitled Add Edit Credit Card Itemization. At this point, you have only disclosed the expenditure to the credit card company, American Express. But that is not enough because it doesn't disclose where the money ultimately went. All that has been disclosed thus far is a lump sum to a credit card. The newest dialog box is where the filer will enter in all of the specific purchases for which the credit card is being reimbursed. For simplicity, this example credit card bill only had two transactions on it. One of the items on the American Express bill is a post office purchase. If the reimbursement detail entry will be itemized, select yes to the question, is transaction itemized? Recall the rules about itemization described earlier. Enter the date that the committee made the purchase with the credit card or select it from the calendar provided. The original payee name field is already populated with the credit card's name. Next, enter the name and address of the vendor or payee where the purchase was made in the field provided. In this case, the payee was U.S. Postmaster. If this is a payee you have entered into the EFS web application before, the fields will populate upon selection from the drop-down menu. Select the purpose code from the drop-down menu. In this case, stamps were purchased, so postage seems appropriate. We select that option. If no purpose code accurately describes your expense, please choose Other. Enter the amount that was spent at the vendor. Please note that the explanation field can be used to provide any other information. It is required when Other is used as the purpose code. The asterisks indicate what fields are required for saving the transaction. Please be aware they are not a complete picture of compliance requirements. Select the Save button, and a new dialog box opens with the statement, Transaction Saved Successfully. Select OK to close. You will repeat these steps for all other purchases that are on the credit card bill until the amount itemized in purchases matches the total amount paid to the credit card company. To complete the process in our example, we will add one more itemization transaction an expenditure on our credit card bill to Staples. Again, we enter the date of the purchase, the vendor name and address, the purpose code of the expenditure, the amount of the purchase, and any other necessary details in the explanation field. We select the Save button, and a new dialog box opens stating, Transaction Saved Successfully. Select OK to close. After closing any open dialog boxes for entering transactions and details, a link entitled Credit Card Itemization appears on the page in the table in the Action column. Select the Credit Card Itemization link from the table to see the itemization already entered and any amount outstanding that has not yet been itemized. Select Add Itemization if more itemization is needed. Once there is $0.00 outstanding in the credit card itemization transaction, as is the case in our example now, the expenditure has been fully itemized and the process is complete. Both reimbursements and credit card payments are common compliance issues on disclosure reports. As always, staff at the New York State Board of Elections is always happy and ready to assist you. Our Campaign Finance Call Center may be reached at 518-474-8200. For technical assistance, our IT Help Desk may be reached at 518 473-4803.